Hello, everyone. And welcome to Chameleon Conversations. So we thought we'd start out discussing how to have difficult conversations. Okay, well, let's define what is a conversation. A talk, especially an informal one, between two or more people in which news and ideas are exchanged. Exchanged. <laughs> Back and <laughs> forth. There is a a tete a tete, if you will. <laughs> so, why do you think certain conversations can become difficult? Hmm. I find that conversations tend to become difficult when there is a differing opinion about something or an idea or view on something. Like it's easy to talk to friends when you agree. Like sure. when you're like, oh, I love this. Oh my gosh, I love this. And you can just talk about a movie or usually, a game. Usually or how friendships start is you, you... Common interest. Common interest. You guys nerd out on something or discuss something for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so th those I feel like are easy. Th that's just an easy conversation um, to have, but it becomes, yeah, I would say difficult when there are different opinions, even life experiences and, and point of views. Also the, the weight, I think, of what it is. Like if you're talking about a uh, sports team, people can kind of banter and like disagree. Oh, on I don't things. know, that one gets pretty heated. Okay. I would say if you're talking about like, you hate coffee or you love coffee. Yeah. Like people the be like, I hate that's coffee. I mean. Yeah, the weight. Can be oh my gosh, depend, I yeah. hate when I say, do you want to meet up at a coffee shop? And people are like, I don't drink coffee. And you're like, have you ever been to one? They serve so many. Some even serve wine and beer. Like, <laughs> I just it drives me crazy. Where would you like to meet? The smoothie shop? What would, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the library. <laughs> you can't talk to the library. You have to water. No, there's no food or drink. <laughs> That's true. Okay. Um, another time when conversations become difficult can be what? I think what can also make these conversations difficult, just practice and approaching it. Mm -hmm. um, I think... Communication in general. Yeah. I mm. think... Uh, I mean, society even tells you don't talk about religion. Don't talk about certain things. These hot button issues. Yeah. And, just don't talk about them. And I think it's kind of... Uh, gone even further and most people just don't talk about anything that can be a tinge hard. A young sibling too, like a younger sibling or maybe just doesn't even have to be younger but a quieter sibling versus like louder siblings often doesn't get a lot of time to share their opinion and so mm -hmm. I find those those types of situations um, tend to create a behavior where in groups where people are sharing, they'll share very passionately with high emotion and want to say a lot because they mm -hmm. don't get heard in yeah, other or situations. Fast. Yeah. <laughs> they get usually, talk really fast yeah, to like, they gotta get my point across before someone cuts me off. Yeah. And they get upset if you even have, um, a different opinion or a, uh, a question even you know if you interrupt them at all like that can be very touchy yeah. well, understandably so um, but because they have not learned or had a lot of practice communicating something that's one so there I mean so far there, there can be a lot of reasons why conversation these conversations can, can be difficult, difficult. Yeah. or other reasons why these can be difficult and I think are unpracticed is yeah, I mean, for one, there's school, uh, not necessarily teaching uh, discussion or conversations. Any emotional anything. <laughs> yeah, like there's some debate classes, but that, that even isn't like always a healthy, like in the sense of like it, it can get very heated and it's very pointed sometimes. Again, there's no em teaching, no education on how to process and communicate emotions. Yeah. Um, and then there's also just culturally um, a lot more um, distance and things you can kind of hide behind in the sense of um, being able to communicate so many ways. Um, you can kind of hide behind text and email and uh, yeah, technology DM. has shifted communication greatly. Yeah. I would say, if I was looking at this, I would say. Um, 
the older generation, which we can blame for like not wanting to talk about emotions or not, I mean, you have to look at and understand where they come from. A generation where they laughed at for a great amount of time, psychology, any of these type of therapies or any of that. So that, so it was very popular to suppress emotion, just quote unquote, be a man, tough it out, be stronger, get thicker skin, right? When they went through a lot of really hard things and didn't know how to pro exactly. process Exactly, nothing things. was taught. It was a yeah. new idea to, to even consider how to process emotions. Mm -hmm. Then we have this next wave of generation that believes in this and is starting to tap into these ideas. And then in the middle of what I think is a great uh, snowball that got rolling, we get technology kind of pushing its way in there as well, which is again, a new thing, mm -hmm. which I think is a great tool. I mean, hence we're using it, right. but at the same time, nowhere along the line have we really for a great deal of time talked about and learned how to, and practiced how to process and communicate our emotions. Yeah. Um, so now we get to, like you said, hide behind a wall, say things, there's like a million outlets to give our opinion now, mm -hmm. um, and with little repercussion. Yeah. And then you and can also- that's where also, you get those yeah. just negative, uh, no, no benefit to a conversation. It is purely just like a, like a little, like, Bottle rockets they just call shot them, off they and run away. They like, call them trolls. Like yeah. there's actually literal a whole culture of just sparking fire in yeah. a conversation, and and then there's also this ability, which I think is incredibly dangerous, which we can talk about in another um, conversation. But is just this cutting out of toxic people or isolating mm. your your isolating your tech, influence. Yeah, yeah, isolating your influence and the voices that are allowed to come in and out of your life. Uh, especially via technology and and, it, and to such a severe degree that you uh, it's it's harmful to you yeah I, oh I think it's great I think there is a time again this is just to graze over it there's a time and a place to kind of remove yourself from people that maybe are hurting you so that you can heal and process your emotions and understand why is this upsetting to me why is the things that this person is saying hurting me so deeply I do think sometimes it's good to walk away depending on your mental state but I don't think it's healthy to do that forever and to just cut people or out. Or make a habit make of Make a it. habit of yeah. cutting people out because then I think it, it actually makes you um, susceptible to becoming very immature, uh, emotionally, yeah. conversationally. Because people challenge each other. Like, and it's not, re it's yeah. never gonna create unity if we continue to divide and only listen to people who agree with us yeah and that's that's sure. not um because then when you go to a person that doesn't agree with you uh you are not practiced in communicating with that person and helping them either see your perspective or all, all that kind of stuff yeah so what are some tools we can walk away with to help us have difficult but meaningful conversations i feel like that was the spark for this being our first uh, little podcast, podcast yeah. conversation, what have you, wherever you're listening to this, was that people always say, we need to have difficult conversations. We need to have these meaningful conversations in order to spark change in a lot of different ways. But I feel like people forget to teach people how. Mm -hmm. So what are some practical tools that we can keep in our back pocket, think about, reflect on beyond this conversation to sharpen and prepare like our abilities to do that you know i think the biggest thing first off is to have them <laughs> uh, to start having them and practice yeah um, even if it's messy even if you don't get yeah. it out perfect and and we you know we we have a couple tools and we hope to uh increase your tool belt but uh yeah i just think again practice makes perfect in all True. things and so our first tool would be to practice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, especially starting out with people who can handle it. Like uh, you need to be able to have these uh, hard conversations with your wife, your spouse. People that you're close to. I feel like harder conversations, in my opinion, should for the most part only be had with people very close to you and who love mm -hmm. you, who already love you for more than an ideal or a... You know what I mean? Because yeah. if you're talking to a stranger about a difficult topic <laughs> yeah. and that's where you're practicing, that 
can be kind of hard because yeah. uh, they have no emotional attachment to you as a person, to right. your growth, to your character. Yeah. Um, or so. your feelings. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes husbands and wives can get carried away in that area too. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah so some tools. Uh, obviously, one I would say is love. Sure. Bottom line, if you're coming at a difficult conversation, it has to be from a heart of love. Mm -hmm. Again, loving that person, wanting and desiring growth or understanding or or any of those things. Like you, you have to maintain love throughout the conversation, which gets into when people start saying, when you start to say mean things that have no meaning to the conversation, they're just right. kind of derogatory or you're like, you're kind of picking on the person, like yeah. circling back and kind of maintaining that center of like, I love you. This is for the, I want to have this conversation. And if we can't stay in love, kind of maybe break away from this conversation for a while so we can come back at it from a place of loving. And even, uh, reminding them of that. I think even in the middle of the conversation oh, being yeah. like, I'm so glad we're talking about this. You know, I love you. Yes. Oh. I love this conversation. Like just being, trying to. I love that we can have this conversation. Yeah, just trying to keep that mood, that point of view uh, in it's that. Per in it's that, so beautiful. Yeah. It's so helpful. I think that helps us in our marriage so often because we can bicker about something. I mean, we're human. We do. Mm -hmm. And we don't agree on everything. And when that happens, being like, wait, 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 I love you. Like I'm, I'm saying hurtful things because I'm upset right now. And yeah. my, and I've gotten, you know what I mean? And like, just that's helped us so much. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, patience, <laughs> patience is another. Patience is always good. Yeah. I would say knowing and understanding that if you're having a difficult or meaningful conversation of depth, changing someone's view or perspective or even changing your perspective mm -hmm. takes time it's yeah. it's not a one shot it's not a one off it's not a debate it's not convincing them at this moment or you win or lose yeah and i think just uh pausing and taking little pauses we, we like to say tactical pauses oh yeah explain um, that what is a tactical pause um so I learned this uh, in the military on, in one of my trainings, and it was a very tactical application, but uh, I, I, it really resonated with me because I felt like you could use this in almost everyday do. instances. Yeah. And so um, it is just before making a decision, especially one, heightened, yeah, like, uh, one, one more stressful decisions um just taking a moment and it can be literally a second a couple seconds and just thinking about what you're about to say what you're about to do uh how Assessing you're about to act the environment exactly and and i think even throughout a conversation just taking that tactical pause before you even uh think about a sentence that you're about to say um just think about how they might take it yeah um are you using the correct words um is it from a position of love? Um, but it also, yeah, it creates that patience. It also shows you're not trying to step on them with your mm -hmm. next point or you haven't listened to them um, and you're just waiting to, you know. Yeah, speedy uh, conversations, I think, are never... Good. Yeah. So those pauses and those, I mean, and we're talking in your mind, in your heart, not necessarily like out loud, like, and tactical pause. Yeah. <laughs> But just taking those moments, and I think, yeah, it has to do with more of a military sense. When things are chaotic, when there is danger, mm -hmm. kind of taking a second, looking around. And I think that that's good because in a conversation, it could be getting aggressive. It could be yeah. getting heightened because of emotions. Taking that into account, considering how to move forward at that point. And, and also, has, has the conversation gotten off topic? taking that pause and thinking, okay, we, where were we last? Where, what where was, was where was the last thing we were talking about that was on, on topic? Mm. Um, what but was that the, comes in later. I know, okay. but it, <laughs> it ties in. I mean, it and, does. uh, and what was the original point of this conversation to, you know, that maybe you can take a moment and then think of a way to tie it back in or yeah. bring you guys back. How can I topic. tactfully without stepping on toes or making somebody feel like they've 
done something wrong in the conversation, but just saying, so um, coming back to my original thought, I kind of had a little bit more question and I want a little bit more elaboration on this or yeah, whatever. For sure. Um, yeah, those are really good. Uh, okay, so now the difference between listening or active listening versus silence. I think that this is huge. <laughs> I was just gonna say, when you initially described that, I think of a posture, A, it's more visual. Um, is like, this listening or silence? Both. Oh, okay. I think someone can look at you and tell that you're listening, and they can also look at you and just tell that you're just being silent that and you're holding. That is a whole other key I didn't even think about, but posturing. Mm -hmm. I have learned that sometimes in a discussion when I start to feel defensive or I will think about how I'm actually sitting mm -hmm. and would I be comfortable sitting across somebody that was looking the way that I do because some yeah. people can look very angry or uh -huh. intimidating or like arms and like think about how yeah. you're postured. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you're, if you're, I think if you're silent, I think, um, you're maybe not listening that well. You're thinking about your next point. Your oh. arms are crossed. You could be tapping your foot or your hands. Uh, you could be sneering at them. Maybe. It doesn't even have to be that like, aggressive. It could just be like dead in the face. Like you can tell someone's yeah. just like zoned out and they're, they might even be smiling at you, but you can, yeah. I just feel like there's a difference and you can tell when somebody is, has practiced silence and leaving space, but yeah. ready to just share their point and they're not actually listening to what you're saying. Ooh, I thought of a whole, another point that we didn't think of. Oh my really. gosh, this is why it's a chameleon uh, conversation. Uh, they're looking at their phone. Oh, uh, again, and, that's posturing. And they're like, oh, I can, I can multitask, oh, don't worry. Didn't we just have this conversation? No. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, like especially in a serious conversation yes. that you, you maybe even yeah, ask Yeah, if you're talking about them, the weather, whatever. But. Yeah, but you ask them, you ask them to sit down, or um, you guys, you know, it seems to be a serious conversation, and yeah, they're looking at your phone, they're looking at something else, but especially, yeah, looking yeah, especially at your phone. Especially your like, phone, that's a poor posture in a conversation of any kind of depth or meaning. Yeah, it doesn't matter how great you are at multitasking. And even if you're, I can't- It's I, just respectful. Yeah, I feel like I can be looking for something too, like, oh, I wanna, I wanna quote this, so I'm gonna, a lot, a lot of that kind of stuff can wait. And even just like listening and then saying, okay, can we take a moment for me to look something up? Cause I think yeah. it's really valid to the, and then they can look at on their phone for a moment yeah. or something. But yeah, I think that's really, really important, especially because technology is great. Phones are great. They're a huge resource at your fingertips, but in a meaningful conversation of depth um, and importance, yeah, you should not be doing that. Yeah. Um, again, yeah, silence versus listening, hugely important. And lastly, I would like to say like the key, the most keyest key, key, key point <laughs> <laughs> um, to me is your, if you're having a conversation with someone that you love, somebody that you care about, mm -hmm. your end result should always be unity. That should be mm -hmm. always the goal. That yeah. it doesn't have to mean agreeing upon something, but a unity of hearts, like yeah. of people. Um, I think that that is so helpful in navigating, especially in friendships and relationships, because I feel like a lot of friendships don't last or people have not learned the ability to continue and make them last because at some point they'll have a dif difficult conversation and they'll just split. Yeah, and because that's easy. That's the easy thing yeah. to do. It truly is the easier thing to do than to communicate through it and even decide that we agree to disagree. Yeah. Um, that is it's much harder. It takes much more maturity and strength and practice um, to yeah. do that. But yeah, your end result should be unity. And I I, I think that's incredibly helpful to keep Definitely. in mind. Um, what are some of the other uh, tools that we got? Um, so I think one uh, difficult thing um, to add upon the difficult pile <laughs> um, is being concise and brief. Um, <laughs> and, uh, one of us struggles with this a little more than the other. Um, uh, was that an unhelpful, uh, <laughs> remark towards me? My emotions. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, uh, yeah, it just, uh, it helps keep the conversation, um, on task. Um, it also... Uh, makes your points clear. I think that's a huge part. If you can say it concisely and clearly mm -hmm. in the briefest way possible. Yeah, and... Uh, it's helpful. It doesn't mean that, again, I struggle with this. Mm -hmm. So I feel like 
you have to have understanding for people like me in this <laughs> boat that maybe don't haven't practiced well enough to gather their thoughts well enough and a friend of mine pointed out that different brains like process information differently you right. are a person that process it bit by bit and you and then it kind of makes a line yeah. where i'm the type of person who consumes lots of information and then draws a line through all of it much later yeah. um you also verbal process hey, that's true so you can i'm thinking out loud up, yeah <laughs> you're talking and then and you can go on rabbit trails and come mm -hmm. back but through that process you were like oh yeah yeah <laughs> exactly and where i can just sit in my own head um and process what they're saying process how i feel like and yeah. then and then, and then when you say, say something. something it's like boom knowledge <laughs> <laughs> But, um, but that would circle back, I think, to patience, where it's like yeah. you have to have patience with people and the fact that maybe they aren't practicing communication, right. how to get better at it, you yeah. know, whereas I am now becoming aware of these things, consciously aware, and you just, yeah. I have to learn, yep. which we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's a good point. To, to kind of go along with, with the conciseness, mm -hmm. um, I don't think that's a word, but um, I think it is. staying concise is to stay on the current topic um depending on what you guys are what you're talking about um you can bring up uh unnecessary old old things or uh you can oh, bring in the past into this, yeah, yeah or you can bring in the things unrelated or not just not necessary mm -hmm. um that really benefit it's like it's like weeding through um, all your things, uh, and it's like writing a paper, like, you can have all these ideas, but only certain ones need to make it to the paper, like. Well, especially because, yeah, it's, it's one paper, and it's not the only paper, it's one paper in many papers that yeah. we will read. You could bring it up another mm -hmm. time, you guys could discuss this again. I have a problem again. doing that, like, overwhelming a conversation with every thought or idea that comes <laughs> into my mind at that moment. Yeah. Which is great but also to my detriment because then nothing can be sifted through quite clearly and i might not even get to the answers that i'm yeah. looking for out of someone because i've just laid eight more questions on them. right yeah and that, that kind of goes back to the brief like if you if you're like oh and then this and then this and then this <laughs> i do this so often which is uh, why this is making me laugh <laughs> uh you you know they may not be able to even remember the first thing yep. you brought up and like it's it's just it's hard to process yeah. all that but mm -hmm. also it's hard to yeah it's just it's just easier to take a bite of that one thing discuss it for a while take a bite of another thing yeah like, it's true um, it's just it's more beneficial if you're talking about something that you really want to get to solutions if you're having just like an open conversation yeah. then it doesn't really matter i also have several friends and you will find them too uh, over communicators like me um who we we call it talking like spaghetti uh because <laughs> a lot of people talk in a straight line or mm. prefer to but then there's those gems you know that <laughs> they're not better anywhere but there are people who will communicate like you as well mm -hmm. and i I find those people and when they're running all over the place in the conversation you can just kind of keep pace in your mind and then I'll have friends be like what was I saying and I'll be like oh you were just talking about this and this and this and like we'll circle like we'll just go through the whole meal of spaghetti together and yeah. that can be great too but you have to know who those people are and who that most aren't <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so so don't don't lose hope <laughs> um this one I like this one your perspective right um when you especially in a heated or tense topic um that's maybe even very personal to them um or you right both of you um when you kind of discuss something you can tell it from your perspective from a story about you, I feel like you, uh, I you can only tell it from your perspective. Yeah, it's a, yeah, for the most part, it's definitely a lot healthier yeah. to do that because um, once you start wrangling them into the in as an example or. Uh, or a, dem even, a demographic that they fit into and maybe not you. Or when you um, weight the conversation. So what we're talking about is I statements like, yeah. I feel, I think, I, I experience, have experienced. Yeah. yeah. I think it gets touchy when you say, well, we all think that. And, and yeah. it's like, that can instantly put somebody in a, in a corner, in a, in yeah. a conversational corner. Definitely. Yeah. And I, I just think it's, it's, you can always, uh, speak from your perspective because it's you like yeah, they, it's they can't deny 
your experience um, uh, that you you feel you experience. Yeah, and it's just it's just a lot. Um, it's just a lot better to to do it from that perspective, and then they they can either agree um, or relate in some ways um, to your experience or your yeah. feelings. Or it's just informative to them to know how you feel. Yeah, it's, sometimes um, it's enlightening to know where somebody gets their perspective from. Um, but yeah, if you label them or say, well, see, you grew up like, like that's kind yeah. of like, you could say, I know that people of this generation had tended to have this and this. I don't know if that's your experience, yeah. but this is what I believe I've learned or come across, whatever, you know, those, right. that's a good good tip um what about what is taking personal responsibility look like maybe you both did something wrong you both need to apologize but you are taking initiative and you are taking responsibility for what you did um you will feel better first of all um admitting what you did wrong and and just take it and even if it's partial responsibility just like hey i messed up um and it's just uh Putting it out there that you are taking responsibility for what you did, positive or negative, yeah. um, and just speaking again from your perspective, um, not trying to make it pointed towards them kind of or levels, that you're better than them yeah, or anything. Yeah, it levels the playing field a little bit. It makes yeah. somebody feel more comfortable too, especially because most of the things we talk about we have done or made the mistake of, and that's yeah. why we have maybe some insight to talk about it because we're right. like, I've done this too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like taking some of that personal responsibility, I do that a lot by saying like, yeah, so what we want to try to do here is this, and, and I've been guilty of this. Like, yeah. I have made this mistake or have done that or thought this way or you know whatever remember whatever idea or opinion or thing that you've come to you've you've come to you you came to it you journeyed to it like yeah. you, have, you have arrived at this place where you are now and remembering that your opinions and ideas might change with right. age like i have a lot of ideas that i have yeah <laughs> and they change like all the time they grow or mature or sometimes completely change and i change my perspective so that is um that's important to remember too. Yeah. And I think um, to wrap it all up, this kind of ties into how we started, which was um, to being from a position of love. And unity. But um, just, uh, I believe, talking and um, explaining in a, uh, in a, with a layer of love on top is to be, is to be positive. No one, you know, no one likes a really heavy conversation anyways and I, I wouldn't even say that's true i think that it's very common in our generation and i found this when i was in like different workplaces and stuff like that it is common almost oh yeah to relate mm -hmm. on negative things Definitely. to uh i mean for lack of a better word gossip about another employee or or even like <laughs> the or, patrons of something and be like oh yeah. ha ha this idiot came in and did this and this oh i had some idiot the, the other day or... who did yeah or or to rag mm -hmm. on the boss and it kind of creates this like it creates like a little communal, uh, relational tribe, a, a sense of belonging, but it is based in a very negative and sometimes toxic manner. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's, I, I want to say that's super hard because it's not the norm. I've been in a lot of situations where the norm is to collectively talk negatively. Yeah. I mean, even like when you go to a bar after work, like, what do you do? You want to sip your beer and you want to talk about the crap of the day, yeah. get it off your chest. Vent. And yeah. Venting yeah. is a common expression, which is helpful. It is good to get those off. And honestly, if you can't get it out in a good way, take it up in a negative way as best you can, but with very special people, not with everyone in yeah. your, and, and I would ultimately say prayer is huge. This is a, in a great area to just confess your, you're like, God, you know my heart. This is exactly how I feel about the situation. And I just need to tell you, I just need to get it off my chest. I know it's not right. I know I'm not thinking in a happy, healthy way, but I just need to pray about this before you. And I mean, that's what a prayer is. It's a conversation with the Lord. And Mm -hmm. um, that is a great place to process some of your emotions before you then take it to someone else because they can be heavy. Mm -hmm. and, and some people can get tired of you perpetually laying on the heaviness onto them. And like, and again, just reflecting on yourself. Am I talking only about things negative? Am yeah. I ever talking about something that I enjoy, that I love, that makes me happy? Yeah. Um, Cause that it's 
it's crucial to your mental health to reflect and spend time thinking about things that there will always be things you can find that are negative or bad about the world but there's also always something good that you can find too yeah yeah i think that's a good start yeah <laughs> to conversations and i mean this has been a lifetime of me trying to figure this out yeah i mean we we still have a lot to learn oh my gosh um yeah. but this is where we're at this is what we've learned we just wanted to share the, the little we know and hopefully we can build upon it yeah help somebody anybody and that's the beauty of conversations they never truly end and we hope you continue this conversation and many more yeah. thanks thanks love you <laughs> <laughs> bye <laughs>